Welcome back. In today's video, we are going to be doing the full review of the Occidental Badger bags. Now that I've had them for about six months and I've actually taken them out in the field, I think I have a better feel for them now. So I'm going to give you some of the pros, some of the cons, some of the ways that I customize my bags. And I also have a special guest, Austin, one of my coworkers, and I'm going to show you how he customized his bags to fit him a little better. Let's get into it. Now I want to start off by talking about some of the concerns people had about the bags. Now that I have them for about five or six months, I feel like I'm more educated and I can kind of give better responses now. First of all, let's talk about the hammer holder. Now, because this is a fabric, um, you know, that canvas material, if you have a wood handled hammer, it's a dream, right? Slides in and out, easy money. You don't have to worry about it. So if you have to swing your hammer all day long, you're not worrying about it. But if you have a stiletto rubber handled hammer, maybe with electrical tape on there, maybe not, I'm not sure. It does not slide in that easily. You kind of have to shift it a little bit. Now, if you're not pulling your hammer out a thousand times a day, it's not that bad. It comes out a lot easier than it does going back in. So you kind of have to push it. Let me see that right there, you have to kind of push it in a little bit. So that's kind of awkward a little bit. So if you are going to invest, 350 bucks into a pair of bags. Maybe investing in a wood handle hammer is probably gonna be the best for you. Like I said before, I knew going in that these bags weren't gonna have the same volume as like the Occidental framers with like huge pouches and huge pockets to, you know, store a whole bunch of batteries or store other things. So I'm gonna show you what I have in my bags and let you see if it's enough volume for you. Okay, so I just got off work so I can show you the tools I'm running with right now. I currently have a DeWalt 35 footer. Now this is my backup tape. I usually run a 25 footer, but sadly my Tajima tape broke. Again, I cannot express how disappointed I was with this tape. It did not have a good standout and it broke really fast. So again, not worth the price. I'm gonna continue to dunk on this tape every chance I get. Got speed square in here, got the bit holder. I got two knives, always have two knives just in case you lose one. And even have a knife sharpener in there for you. Now, I also keep these, this is a like Hilti if you get like a drill bit sometimes or you get um, a like wire brush. Keep these, cause these are one of the best ways to keep things waterproof. Whether you have, you know, different drill bits, you don't wanna get rusted out or you know, just little punches. Keep these in your bags. This is this is awesome. This is like actually one of the best containers you can have. So on the other side is where I keep all my tools. I have my Tajima chalk. Like I said before, Tajima makes some of the best chalk boxes, bar none. Stay away from the tapes, get you a chalk box. Klein Lyman pliers, Klein diagonal cutters, still working great. A mini, Crescent wrench, this works good for a lot of little odd end jobs where you don't want to have the big spud wrench. So this actually is pretty nice. Pull torque chisel. I got a, a Stabila Torpedo. I've always had one, but I also have a holder now. So at some point I'm going to undo the belt and then put this in the back at some point. Also, I got the Holtefort pencil and some extra lead just in case. So I'm never really running out and also sometimes when the, when the lead does get dull, you want some sharper lead so you can kind of change that out right there. Some random assortment of fasteners. I got some like SDSs in here, you know what I mean? So overall, it's actually pretty good. Now, if you have to, if you want to load up like a lot, uh, maybe of like Titan bolts in here, or you want to load up a whole bunch of batteries, it's going to be hard on the basic body of this bags. But I did get the diamond back bag just for extra volume. So say you needed a whole bunch of nails or screws, you can load them up in here. And I like the fact that it's clipped, so you can just clip it on there. So you don't have to worry about disassembling the whole entire belt. You can just kind of clip it on there. And I, I found that the more weight that's in the bags, the more it actually, you know, clamps down a little better. That pressure it's actually works better for it. And I don't really love this loop because it seems like things keep swinging to my legs. And so I bought the diamond belt, the diamond back belt loop 
I bought the diamond uh, loop, so it has a, a loop for a gun and it has a loop for a drill motor, which is actually pretty nice. I like having things behind me out of the way so I have my hands in front of me, everything's behind me so I can be more effective. When things are swinging into my legs, it does you know, kind of get in the way a little bit. And one of the gems that I found was this magnet. This magnet is super strong and it makes it easy to have like this nail punch. I have this on my back all day long and it never falls off. If I need a, like a, a different apex and I'm switching back and forth all the time, I can store it back here and it's gonna stay there. This is actually a great find. And this nail punch is actually pretty dope too. The fact that it has a position to hit it right here and hit it right here. It's actually pretty nice and it's really sturdy and robust. So I found this on Amazon. It's kind of like if you bought this magnet, maybe you want this. And that was a great recommendation actually. Another thing that's great about this bag right here is it's the perfect size to fit a water bottle. You know, during the summertime, it gets really hot. You want water on you, but you don't want to have to hold it the whole time. You don't want to set it down and lose track of where you left it. Someone might steal it, or a lot of times I've lost like hundreds of water bottles just setting it down somewhere. End of the day comes, I don't know where it was last. You might have, you know, something in here gets moldy and stuff. So it's just nice to have everything on you so that you don't lose track of it. And it's more convenient too, right? Now I'm going to pass over to Austin to see how he customized his bags. So these are Austin's bags and I think they actually are pretty neat. He's one of the only people that I know that actually has the Badger bags also. And so for some reason, the audio on his uh, microphone didn't record. So I'm going to have to try to add a voiceover myself. Hope it's not too bad. So first, let's talk about some of the ways he customized his bags. First, he added a flap over the chalk box, which kind of protects it from the weather, adds a magnet to it, which is actually pretty nice. Um, he had a, the diamond back, a hammer holder to replace the cat's paw holder, which actually lets it, you know, be further up. So it's not so deep. Also, he added a two by four chunk in the tape measure slot so that he can, you know, get access to his tape a lot easier. He adds a piece of pencil into all the pencil holders. And so, uh, a pencil he's using can never get too deep, which is actually really smart. He has a stabila holder like everybody else does. Um, he also has a first aid kit, which I think is actually really smart. It has a uh, bandage in there, a tourniquet. So if you were to get injured, like you're not close to the office, it's a really, really smart thing to have on you. He has a nice little belt. He didn't like how the Badger belt was like too thick. So he got his own and just, this is the way he customized bag. I think it's really nice and it kind of fits his style more. Um, I really like his bag. So yeah, that's pretty much what he has. He's gonna kind of go over some of the tools he has and how he likes to organize all of his tools and his pouches. But overall, I think um, I do like some of the ways he changed things up. You know, he has his little tools in here. He talks about, you know, putting things in the pockets and also how one thing about the Badger bag, which is nice, is they actually are uh, loops. They're not actual pockets. So things don't get lodged in the, the pockets where you can't get at them. They kind of fall into the bags itself, which is actually pretty smart. Now, another big concern I had for a pair of bags that are like $350 plus is the Velcro. These haven't moved at all and shifted. I've had no reason to take these bags apart. So the Velcro is completely intact. It's, I've gotten these bags dirty, grimy, sawdust covered, and these have not moved at all. And people who have had these bags for a lot longer, I've actually found some coworkers actually been running these bags for a while, said that's never been an issue. Now let's talk about bags that there might be an issue. Let's give an example like these CCL bags right here. These bags, you're gonna constantly be dealing with the Velcro because it's an integral part of your belt system as far as like latching them together. I do not like that because this is gonna be exposing you to concrete debris, sawdust, and then once these get filled up with gunk, they don't ever latch on properly. Obviously you have that belt part, but I do not like exposed Velcro. And on the Badger bags, all the Velcro is all like hidden on, it, hidden on itself and you're not constantly moving it. So this is not ideal. But if you are a tool bag maker, take notes. CCL does this right more than any other bag company. Having these handles, makes transporting your bags so much better. It kind of feels like a briefcase. Everything is all equal. Nothing is kind of like lopsided. When you grab your bags like this, things tend to fall out, uh, especially when you are transporting from like maybe one job to another. Say you're gonna call to another job site, you have to load all your stuff up. Having a handle where you can grab your bags with one hand, 
it makes it so much better. So again, in the future, if you guys are bag manufacturers, as long as the handles are robust and they're not getting away of the fall protection, this is ideal. This is probably the best way to go. So let's get the final review. Overall, I was really impressed with them. I've had these for about five or six months now. I've taken them through the paces. I've done finished work, inside work, concrete work, in the rain, in the snow. They held up pretty well. I like them. And now that I was able to customize them with the pouch and the uh, nail gun holder and the drill holder, this makes them that much better. Now again, it is a big investment. These bags are now about 500 bucks now, so if you are gonna buy these, know what you're getting. Don't get mad at a screwdriver for not being a hammer, right? These are great for finished work, siding, things we need a slimmer uh, form factor. Now, if you just need to load up on a shit ton of nails and have a lot of batteries or you're working in a more remote area where you don't have access to, you know, your connects all the time, get the framers, get the bags that have more volume. But if you're looking for organization, a place to put every single tool in your bags, these are ideal. I actually really do like these. If you want to put a whole bunch of racks and nails in here, these are going to be great for you. So again, like I said, I really enjoyed the bags. If I had a choice to go back in time to purchase them again or not i definitely would i think they're definitely worth it as a carpenter these bags are not going to make you a superstar it's going to be your mind it's going to be your practice it's going to be actually the things you put into the trays but these are definitely going to make it easier for you to have everything you need on you so that's my review hope you guys enjoyed it catch you guys next time peace